All right, we just turned in our first exercises, which were our introduction to compositing. That was unit two, so good job. Now we go to unit three, and you see that instead of having a theme of image mining, of taking other people's pixels and using them for ourselves, we are going to get introduced to this idea of vector shapes. If you remember from our very first, first class and our kind of slides introducing us to the digital art discipline, the first of four types of digital art is compositing. The second is vector graphics. They are very different from each other. And yet, we have a lot of similar skills that we apply. So where with the, the composite of line art, we started with a lot of material that we found, and then we kind of cut it down. That's like subtractive sculpture. You're carving down from a block of wood. With this vector shape project, we're going to build up from nothing. It's called additive. And our additive process is going to be used to make a custom emoji. Now, raise your hand if you don't know what emojis are. All right? For the record, no one raised their hand because we see emojis a lot. And they're, they're used on lots of different devices, lots of different ways. They are used in the same interface as type design. And both type design, like these letter forms on the screen right here, and these emojis, they are both designed as vectors which means from the same file, they can be shown at any resolution, any size. That gives them maximum versatility. All we're doing for this unit, and it's going to be due next class, um, is working on exercise two. And we're going to do our own shape composition out of vector tools. You know, in the past, we would do things like analyze different illustrations from the past. So this was a past student example of Uncle Sam done with vector shapes, right? But to simplify it, because that got fairly complex, we are going to do emojis, which we think of as being very simple. But we're going to see in that all of the potential that vector shapes has. Now, because there are so many emojis out there, the theme for this one is going to be a band book theme. And that's going to make for some original and interesting emojis, right? So this one was inspired by Lord of the Rings, which is on all the band books list for its use of, of smoking and its use of magic and its use of devils. Band books simply means that public institutions that hold this book, often libraries, universities, schools, uh, get challenged for having them by school boards, by community members, right? And so then they have to argue every few months for why they should include the Lord of the Rings in their collection, right? Why they should include the Bible in their collection, why they should include Harry Potter in their collection. So the banned books list is, is interesting to know. It is an ongoing thing for, for censorship advocates. And it's an interesting source for, for public comment, right? So the way I approach this example was just to take a character from the Lord of the Rings, like the orc characters, and then make an emoji of it. So some of these, this one's from Lord of the Flies. This one's from The Hate You Give. You know, you can illustrate a character, illustrate a feeling of the band book, and it gives us an opportunity to learn a little bit about band books as well. So the, here are some emojis. It's kind of classic yellow-faced emoji is how they started. These are a list of the books we currently have in our NLC library. This is by no means a list of all of the books that are routinely challenged. But on this list, there are probably a few books that you recognize. Uh, for the morning class, I'm doing A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. It's a fun book. You might know of A Wrinkle in Time or To Kill a Mockingbird. Or you might just be interested in some of these because you've seen the movie, like Fight Club, The Color Purple, right? Um, I'm reading Fahrenheit 451 right now, so I think that would be an interesting one to do for me. So the first step is to just pick a book, right? Once you've picked your book, you might research it just a little bit. So I'm going to claim my book right now. This is a good way to kind of engage and hold yourself accountable. I'm just going to put my name in, start my assignment, and then I'm going to, in parentheses, put my book title, which I think I spelled wrong. 
Where we go. All right. And then I'm going to post it and I can edit it and add my, my work as I go. So if that's my work, now I might research a little bit about it because books are based in type, right? They're not usually based in images unless they're a children's book. And by looking at images, this is the edition I have that I'm reading. There are covers, right? And because I, I work as an editorial illustrator sometimes, I do book covers sometimes. Book jackets are really fun to design because they're trying in a, a pretty eye-catching way to symbolize kind of the soul of the text, right? Without literally telling the story. So you'll see a lot of fire imagery for this. Sometimes figures within the fire. And it's a futuristic story where the firemen are actually paid to and paid by the state to set fires, especially of any homes that are reading books, right? Rather than to put fires out. And then I really love the elegance of the, the cover of the edition that I'm reading, which has a book, which is also a box of matches. So just really clear graphic design. What would an emoji be? That's going to be interesting to experiment with, right? Because I'm not seeing anything that jumps out at me as kind of a, a recognizable commonplace emoji. So that's why I get to customize my own. Maybe this is the closest, right? So I might save that as some reference. And I'm going to build in my class folder a folder for exercise number two. And then I'm going to drag this inspiration image. You might have several. You might just have one. But if I forget what I was thinking of as I start at the end of class today, this will help me remember. And then maybe just the idea of a burning book is one that I like as well. Maybe I save that. So these are inspiration images. Okay, now you might also illustrate, not illustrate, research why they are routinely challenged. So if you look up banned book reason along with the title that you chose and you go to just a regular search, it will tell you uh, usually the reasons why people object to it. So it depicts violence, it uses profanity, it has a perceived negativity towards religion, uh, vulgarity, which is just another term for profanity, and it discusses drugs. So sometimes if you don't know how you want to comment on something, it's interesting to comment on the reasons that people find it problematic, right? Some people, by no means all people. Because often it's because of this, this use of content that it's considered a valuable text as well, because it's willing to talk about things that aren't always talked about. All right, so from there, I can start with the assignment. So I say this is additive from the bottom up, but instead of just starting to sketch like we will for an illustration project later on or for a logo project, I'm not just going to try to sketch an original emoji. I'm going to start with sketching using this very limited tool that's browser based and linked here, which is emojimaker.flaticons.com. <laughs> because these are vectors at their most basic. Vectors are simple shapes that are filled with one color and they are infinitely scalable. So notice, no matter how much I zoom in on this, the typeface is always clean and this vector is always clean. That is not true of raster images. Okay, So we are going to be using vector shapes just to make our sketch. And the way this works is you can hit this randomizer button and just see all of the kind of potential mashups you can do. But it's actually, you have very limited options. And that's by design to start us off. So we're going to start fresh by clicking on the trash can. And we just get the blank background, which is the yellow circle basis emoji. And then you'll see all of your options on the bottom here. If you don't see them all, you can scroll through them. From devil to ghost to alien to purple horn thing to skull to poop to Cartman, you know, all the different ones. So to monkey, cowboy. If this is kind of my inspiration, 
something like that. This is the only thing you can't edit. This is your base shape, and you can only choose one of them. The most complex one is probably the mind-blown one, which I kind of like for this because it suggests maybe something like flames or something powerful and explosive. And I'm thinking I want to do something with flames coming out of it, right? So I'll pick that as my base. Next, these criteria on the bottom, we have eyes, mouths, accessories, right? Eyes, mouths, and accessories, you can layer them up as many as you want. They're like cutouts of paper, right? So I can try the hearts, and it gets layered up on top of my background. The problem is I don't get to move it around. I don't get to change its size. I'm stuck with it, right? So if I want to choose something, I select it, and if I want to deselect it or unchoose it, I have to click it again. Pretty forcefully. All right. So I think I do want some sort of face, but I can use multiple sets of eyes. And so I like these weird ones, not because they work for eyes for my design, but just because they give some texture and maybe some dirt to the smoke or fire that I'm going to eventually make. Because this is just a sketch for something I'll make with my own vector shapes. I can try out different eyes and add them, turn them off. But I want them that are lower down so they don't interfere with the top of the head as much. And there are lots of eye options. So I might want ones kind of like that or like this. And then I can mix that with different eyebrows or different expressions. Oh, I kind of like that. Serious eyes. Right. Now, whatever you click last is going to show up on top. Right? So if I want the hearts to show up on top of everything, even once I add accessories, like if I add a cowboy hat, if I go back to eyes and I chose the heart eyes, they'll show up on top. So I think I'm good with eyes for my sketch. And if I change my background, that will show up behind. Right? But I like my background. And you can only have one background. And it doesn't need to be yellow in your finished thing. You know, you're going to have full control of all aspects. So now I've finished with eyes. I've layered up a few. Now I'm going to play with the mouths. <laughs> and that's kind of cool, actually. It just covers up the eyes completely. Because what do I want? I want something that feels a little bit in distress. Not just unhappy, but kind of oppressed. So this probably isn't going to work well. There's a thermometer, which kind of works for Fahrenheit, right? So you're just kind of playing around. These are all simple shapes. Even the ones that feel complex like this, they're just made of simple shapes. And by layering two frowns together, I can get a slightly different shape. You do a frown with a mustache. I don't think they have mustache options. That would be kind of cool. All right, so now I've kind of got my mouth, and now accessories. Wouldn't it be nice if they had flames? Alas, they don't. They have face masks. That's a nice addition. They keep adding little things to this simple program. Monocle's pretty cool. 
but the most effective emotion